Oh, howdy. How have y'all been? You miss me? Well, I'm back. Roman Rich, 66 minutes, episode number 34. It's been a lot going on the last few weeks, people. Uh, how have you been doing out there? Let's put the chat up on the screen. Let's get some comments flowing. I've been busy. I hope you've been busy. The weather has been amazing. I've been working at work a lot. I've also been doing a lot of Route 66 stuff pretty often. Uh, I've been up and down the road here in Missouri a number of times. Uh, I did some work down at the Devil's Elbow Bridge. I put up my, uh, my sculpture down there. For those of you that didn't see it, uh, I'll put up a link maybe later that shows the video of me installing the sculpture there at Devil's Elbow. It's something I made out of old uh, rummaged pieces or damaged pieces from the bridge. Um, I'm going to keep some notes here because, man, it's been a long time since I've done a video. I didn't even know if I was going to be on tonight. I was having some camera issues, and I got those solved last minute, and it caused me to delay the show an hour. So thank you for tuning in. For those of you that don't know the show, it's your first time. We talked for about an hour, hour and six minutes about Route 66 stuff. And um, we get, we just kind of get down to the heart of things. We talk about all sorts of stuff, Route 66. And Lord knows there's been a ton going on the last few weeks up and down Route 66. We've got the, uh, the whole issue with the Gemini Giant. We've got uh, Monger Moss stuff going on here in Missouri. I've done some work at the Shamrock. I did some work down at Devil's Elbow, did some work down at the Gasconade Bridge, uh, just all sorts of stuff going on. And uh, man, lots of stuff, lots of stuff. Got our license plates in to the state of Missouri. These beauties right here, that's a motorcycle version. See if I get the camera to tune in right there. Whoop. Yeah, I had to get my face out of there. It's that, one of those intelligent cameras that fixates on the face focuses yeah that's a motorcycle version right there those should be going into production and being shipped out anytime soon for those of you who are missouri resident and are interested in having a nice black route 66 license plate on your car you can get one now and we should be getting our first batch any day now it's so exciting yeah, good evening, everybody. Uh, good to see you. Good to see you. So I think I might have somebody in the back studio here. Uh, I've got Justin with me. Justin doesn't have a last name and he doesn't have video, but I'm going to bring him in here. We got some audio and see what we got. Hi, Justin. Can you hear us? Uh, yes. How's it going, sir? Who, Justin, what's your last name? Oh, well, this is uh, West. I'm sorry? Uh, West. Justin West? Yeah. Hey, thanks for coming on to the show, man. What brings you out here? Uh, I just wanted to hear what the latest is on the 66. Yeah? Anything in particular? Uh, no, maybe your uh, your your theater, I mean your uh, hotel, even though it's not 66 related. But uh, no, I'm open for anything. My motel? Yeah, your motel. Well, my motel is on Route 66, so it's it's Route 66. Oh, right? okay, you're right. All right, sorry about that, <laughs> Justin. Where are you, <laughs> Justin, where are you from, sir? Uh, Peoria, Illinois. Peoria, Illinois, and I think you and I have had some exchanges over the years on Facebook. Is that correct? Th that's correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You do some traveling yourself, don't you? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what did you think about the whole Gemini Giant thing here lately? Uh, well, I mean. Uh, the one up at the, up in, uh, what's it called? Uh, near Chicago in Wilmington. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm actually, I don't know the latest on it, but I'm, I'm here to see, but it's, uh, well, I can tell you the latest, um, uh, Holly Barker. She's the one that owned the launching pad. She still in theory owns it. Um, she put all the merchandise, all the assets associated with the, the launching pad up for sale and auction for a few weeks. And the Gemini Giant fetched a princely $275,000 bid. 
And that came through from the Historical Society of Wilmington. And they're going to, they already moved Gemini Giant. They already picked them up. I don't know if they have reestablished a new location for them, but they went and got them. And uh, they're, they're going to keep them there in Wilmington. Wow, that's amazing. It is kind of amazing. It's the, the, the interesting thing. And I've been very, very hush-hush about this for the last oh, three or four months. There's been a lot of people with uh, pitchforks and torches going after Holly Barker. And it's, uh, it's kind of sad. You know, her and Tully put in a huge amount of money to save that place. Uh, they put in a lot of sweat equity, a lot of effort and passion to bring that place back from the ashes. And I don't know what the demise was exactly, why they closed down. I'm sure it probably stemmed from the whole COVID thing that happened a few years back. Um, and that, that was probably a big part of it because Illinois experienced a lot of unnecessary lockdowns. Uh, compared to the rest of the country, and it really crippled small businesses. But um, that was the start of it. And so somehow, somewhere, you know, Tully and Holly had a breakup, and they uh, they split ways, and they, you know, they closed down the restaurant. And then uh, Holly's been going on uh, several rants over the last year or so, um, speaking out about uh, child sex trafficking and stuff like that which is, you know, a great thing to rant about. Uh, but somehow she tied that in with the Gemini giant. And in the last episode that I saw of her on Twitter, and I recorded that on my phone someplace, uh, she went on to say that uh, the Gemini giant was a POS. Uh, and I'll let you use your imagination there. You can, yeah. you can fill, fill in the acronym. And, uh, and that he was uh, sa- satanic. And that, that us Route 66 people were worshiping him as a sa- satanic idol. Um, I, don't, I don't necessarily agree with that. I don't worship Route 66. I consider myself to be a Christian person. And um, I don't see it as a false idol at all. It's just merely a roadside attraction that's, that's fun. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? Did you ever visit Gemini Giant, Justin? I did not. Um, I've, I've, uh, been up in that area looking for various things, but I just never made it to Wilmington. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I've got people asking about, um, being on the show tonight. I guess I should put that QR code up. It's right there. That's the yeah. QR code for any of those that want to join. How easy was it for you to get in tonight, Justin? It was pretty good. The, um, I'd not been on, uh, the restream before and it, it was having all kinds of like uh, questions about, um, you know, uh, am I willing to give up my access to my whatever and blah, blah, blah. And I'm going, my God, I'm just trying to watch his show. So <laughs> I, uh, I, are, you, I, on, are then, you on a phone by chance? Uh, no, I'm on a computer. Okay. Okay. Well, so your audio is great. Your audio sounds fantastic. So whatever you're using there, it sounds really good. Well, that, that's great, and but but yeah, that otherwise, uh, yeah, it's good to see you again on TV here having a show, and I'm looking forward to catching the rest of it. Well, that's great. Anything else, Justin? You want me to touch on while I've got you here? No, no, I'm I'm fine. I thank you, Rich. All right, thank you so much, Justin. Appreciate you, you coming on the show, sir. Have you a bet. good one. Go Bye. your own way. Mm-hmm. So, anyway. Uh, it's been a while. I, you know, I wasn't even sure tonight if we were going to have a show and I've been wanting to have a show the last few weeks. I don't even know how long it's been. And, uh, I've just been so busy. I've literally been working nonstop since about uh, a week after Christmas. I mean, I've been just go, 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 go. And, uh, I have, I've thankfully been able to post a few things on Facebook here and there and just kind of showing um, my progress in doing things and my activities. So luckily, I've been able to take out a few moments and, and do that. Uh, just yesterday, I was down in Springfield, Missouri, kind of doing a barn find thing where we pulled an El Camino out of an old garage. And that was cool. I got to, I got to sit in the old 72 El Camino as we pushed it out of the garage, and, and it got loaded up and sent down the 
down the road. And I don't know what's going to happen to it. It was pretty rusty. It was a pretty beat up old, uh, old El Camino. Um, I got, I'm looking through the, uh, the chat here. Let me see here. Let me go back to the chat. See if I've missed anything. Um, hello everybody. I've got some friends in La Pasada, Winslow. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, they opened up Route 66 between Amboy and Kel Baker Road. That is good news. I, I can't wait for them to get that whole stretch through the desert opened up. That is going to be fantastic. And I hope Caltrans is, is taking a bigger interest in getting that done and uh, making that happen because that is really a spiritual stretch of road. I'll, I'll just tell you, you, you know, you get out there in the middle of the desert and your mind, just turn the radio off, your mind can take you to places uh, that you're never going to take, you're never going to go to if you're traveling through um, the city or the suburbs or anything like that. You're, it's just you in the great wide open out there in the middle of the desert. It's pretty amazing. And to think about what the earliest travelers had to endure to uh, transcend or, or to get over, traverse, that uh, that desert environment, you know, which wasn't probably even paved. It was just sandy and rocky and uh, had to be a real, real challenge. And I bet some people were really, really up in arms and, and had a lot of anxiety as to whether or not they were going to make it through that desert. Just uh, pretty neat, pretty neat. Uh, Brady Wilson says it's been over a month since uh, he's been marking off the calendar. Thank you, Brady. I might need to hire you as a scheduling assistant. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see here. Mike May says Caltrans is lending some help, but it's San Bernardino County who is in charge of it. That's why it has taken so long because it's not a state highway. So that does make sense, Mike, that uh, it probably is much more difficult for them to find uh, funding to uh, pay for bridges and road uh, reconstruction out there after all the flooding being that really it's just a a handful of people that live out there. So, um, yeah, uh, Pat wants to know about the Munger Moss news. Well, the Munger Moss is having a work day, and I apologize for not being prepared tonight and having links and stuff ready. Um, and my nose is itching like crazy because it's spring and there's tons of pollen floating around. Uh, but there, I believe it's May 3rd. There's going to be a work session out at the Munger Moss Motel. And it's important for as many people to show up to that as possible because I have been trying to uplift the spirits of Shelly Lehman. She's the daughter of Ramona, who has been actively trying to keep that business open, keep that motel running for Route 66 visitors. And uh, there, there, there's, there's, a, there's a dark force behind the scenes trying to purchase that motel and they have been for over a year now and we got that stopped about uh, 13 months ago um, i helped ramona do that we got that sale stopped and uh, they're still at it and, and they want nothing more but to reduce the munger moss to that of a lowly apartment complex and they've done this all over Missouri and Arkansas. It's called the Dells Corporation. They take old motels, they clean them up, they put a, they put a quick paint job on them, and it's the same thing. It's like black and gray uh, with some wood trim. They do the same treatments to every single motel they renovate, and then they turn them into apartment complexes, and then some of them they've put up for sale. So they're flippers in essence. Uh, and but what you really need to worry about here is that they're going to um, strip Route 66 of one of the most popular and iconic motels ever known to Route 66 travelers in the last 30 years. So um, it's important that you show Shelley Lehman your support. Show up on May 3rd, no matter how far away it is. If you've got a couple of days off, just come on down there. If you've never done a volunteer day. You owe it to yourself to do it. I was invited to do several volunteer days early on in my tenure as a Route 66 Explorer. And uh, I, I worked so much 
and I do um, blue collar, laborious construction work. And I thought, man, <coughs> excuse me, I work so much anyway, I'm out here to explore the road and do research. And and I've done most of my research that I've ever wanted to do. There's still a few things I want to hit here and there. But uh, once I started doing volunteer work, nothing feels better. Nothing feels better than to get out there and, and put in a helping hand just to clean something up. And every individual out there uh, makes, makes a big difference. Uh, Elizabeth posted uh, May 3rd through 5th in Lebanon. There is a Facebook link. We'll put that out there too in the Facebook page, the Munger Moss Workday. But uh, if you've never done a Workday, you really should try it because it's there's nothing more that's rewarding to get out there and just to help clean something up or paint a wall or uh, sweep something and just to help out. And it means the world to people like me and the layman's and everybody else on Route 66 who's ever had volunteer help. It just it just keeps us going. The level of encouragement is amazing. If it wasn't for all the wonderful volunteers and monetary donors that have contributed to the Shamrock, I can guarantee you uh, I would have lost interest a long time ago in that project. And it's actually fueled my interest and my passion to really take the Shamrock Motel to the ultimate level of boutique Route 66 motels. And I'm hoping that our community will get behind the Munger Moss and the daughters of, of Ramona and Bob Lehman, who ran the motel for 50 years. I'm, I'm hoping that we can support those people and encourage them, uplift them to keep the motel going and hopefully very soon turn it over to some Route 66 interested parties who might take over new ownership and take the Munger Moss into the next level of its uh, evolution. So that's my soapbox on the Munger Moss. Um, looks like there was some news about the Globetrotter. I'm looking through the chat. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. Uh, we've also got a roadie meetup. There, you know, there's all sorts of stuff going on. We got this eclipse coming up, but even better, besides the sky going dark, we're going to light the sky up in South St. Louis County at Watson and Lindbergh at the Holiday Inn. We've already, or not we, but uh, there's already been uh, a, a, a rest restoration of the Park Plaza neon sign. And it's already erected. So you can go down there right now and check out the sign. It's not lit up. We're going to light it up the first time on April 13th. So again, uh, we want to check that out. Let's, uh, let's see here. Park Plaza. We're going to post links to all this stuff on the 66 Minutes Facebook group. And uh, there's so much stuff going on. We even, not, not to mention our motor tour. It's going to be happening this fall. And uh, all sorts of things. Let's see here. Let me look through the... Let's see here. Ba, ba, ba. It's going to be a cleanup, according to Brady Wilson in Texas at the Allen Reed Station on April 20th and 21st. Hope to see everybody down there. That'll be good. Uh, that's a neat little gas station that re was restored probably uh, 20 years ago. Uh, Rob Menlin is also mentioning if you're coming to St. Louis, we're going to be opening the west side of the Chain of Rocks Bridge. Great Rivers Greenway spent uh, several million dollars uh, building a new western terminus that people and visitor center over on the Missouri side of the Chain of Rocks Bridge, which is going to offer tourists and visitors a whole new perspective of the bridge, hopefully. And uh, I do believe there's going to be security there. So that has always been a major factor in visiting the Chain of Rocks Bridge from Illinois or Missouri especially Missouri because of so many break-ins and robberies. But allegedly there's going to be on-site security patrolling the site all the time. So that's a great thing. And uh, I'll be there. I'll be there when they reopen that. It's going to be really awesome. I can't wait to see it. And hopefully if the association comes into a lot of money in the future, they have left a spot in their big grand plan, the Great Rivers Greenway folks have left a spot for us to possibly recreate the toll booth 
that visitors used to use when the highway actually used to cross over the bridge. You used to have to pay a toll to get across that bridge. So um, we want to recreate that toll booth. It was a really neat looking Art Deco uh, toll booth. Okay, let me read back through here. So much stuff. I better write that down too. Chain of Rocks opening. So much stuff. And I haven't even gotten to the big part of this, the, the big motivating part of this, this uh, video, which is the Ribbon Road. For those of you that don't know the Ribbon Road, let me see here. I did throw a video up on deck. I don't know if it's going to play very well. I mean, I've, I threw this show together in the last 15 minutes prior to coming out here at 8 o'clock. Let's see what we got here. So that's the Ribbon Road right there. That's a drone video I shot probably 10 years ago. And that's a nine foot wide federal highway. It predates uh, numbered highways, U.S. highways by uh, about three or four years. I think this was built in 22, 23. This is one of the first paved surfaces through Oklahoma. It's nine foot wide. It's just wide enough to accommodate that of a Model T or a Model A. And, uh, oh, there's me flying. <laughs> Um, so that's, that's the road and what we're talking about. And this, this, this road was a monumental motivating force for me becoming interested in route 66. And I don't have the postcard here right next to me, but you guys can look it up. Shelly Graham's, uh, route 66, uh, dog on route 66 postcard and uh looked that up and that was one of the one of the motivating factors for me becoming interested in route 66 was seeing that postcard seeing that dog walking towards the camera uh down in the lower right hand corner of the frame on this little bitty uh sliver of paved road which is known as route 66. so what's the issue what's the problem well Ottawa County is the problem. They uh, have been working to do restoration on the road. They've been putting together plans for years. And uh, I weighed in on those plans some years ago. I provided my expertise to the engineering company on what they should do as a practical outlet to not only provide some restorative measures to the road, but to also make it practical and low maintenance for people to travel that road, locals especially. And I can go into that plan a little bit, um, you know, and let me share my screen because there's some things that are pretty important. Let me get here, share my desktop here. Okay. So, Here's a section of the road, and I don't know if you can see that. Let me close this out real quick. No, hold on a second. Okay, we'll try this again. There we go. So there's the road. There's one of my stencils I painted, and gosh, I probably did that stencil. That's a bigger stencil. I probably did that one around 2016 or so, 2017. And... Uh, that's original asphalt and that was one big point of contention during all these discussions was well how do we know it's original asphalt that seems impossible and by today's paving standards that would seem impossible because this what i'm telling you is 100 year old asphalt and they they want to destroy this they want to grind all this asphalt up and replace it. So how do I know it's 100 year asphalt? Well, I've been paving since I was about, oh, three years old. And I know it's hard to believe, but the first time I came in contact with hot asphalt was 1981 when I helped pave uh, my childhood home's driveway with my father. And he was an asphalt contractor. That was my first encounter with asphalt. And I've been playing with it ever since. So um, I did some research on this road and um, here's another picture that I think will be interesting. So 
that is a remnant of uh, two things. That is asphalt and that is concrete. Where did I find that at? So I, I didn't take it from the road per se. There is a resident who used to have a section of road that ran through his property. Uh, they used to have a section of ribbon road that ran right through his property. His name was Malvern Burks, and he lived just east of the city uh, line, the city uh, border or whatever, Afton. You can find chunks of ribbon road off in the woods from when it was demolished, where the road used to go through, because the road used to be just off to the side of where it is today. And we found this, uh, Christy Chance and I went hiking through the woods and we found this chunk of, of ribbon road, the concrete and the asphalt. And look how dark that is. So when we zoom in on this, I mean, that is pitch black like coal. And so back to the whole thing, how do I know this is 100 year old asphalt? Well, I did a lab test on this. I brought this sample back to St. Louis on my own and had it laboratory tested at an asphalt plant that I do a lot of business with. And they, uh, they came to the conclusion that this was a highly concentrated amount of oil in this asphalt. And that's why it retains its dark, rich black color. Um, and it's still pretty dark today. Um, we'll get that popped up again here. That's if you look at that, it's it's kind of gray, but it's it's a really dark gray. And it's because of that high oil content that keeps it that way. And so another reason why I know it's the original pavement um, at that time, they were really trying to prove that this surface was innovative and let and, and going to be the thing. Asphalt was going to be the thing for paving highways and roads. This is a new, a new phenomenon was, was traveling um, across the United States on paved roads. You know, this is pre-U.S. highways. For those of you who don't know, uh, U.S. highway system came about in the 1920s, 1926 specifically. So this, this was like the leading, the cutting edge technology of paving at the time. And so it wasn't like they were trying to work for job security. They were trying to prove that this was a viable product. So they used an extra uh, concentrated mixture of asphalt, probably because they didn't know any better. Um, the other thing is, is that this section of road only lasted as Route 66 for a few years. I believe it was 1928 or 29, just three or four years after... Route 66 was commissioned at a, as a numbered highway that they bypassed this section of road. Uh, if you look on Google Maps where this road is at, and it's just south of Miami, Oklahoma, you'll see that this road just meanders through farm fields. And even today, if you look at the picture, it's still meandering through a farm field. So um, they would have had no real motive or interest in ever paving this road over again or, or doing a lot of maintenance. They did some patching here and there, but not much. And so, um, yeah, it's, <laughs> they, they didn't have the money. It was a poor county and they wouldn't have had the motive anyway to repave this thing. It is 102 year old asphalt, no doubt about it. I'd bet everything I own. And so knowing all that, I gave the uh, guy engineering is the engineering firm working on this, this project. And let me, let me put a few things up on here because there is a petition and, and there's some, there's some stuff going on. So I'm going to change the QR code. There's a petition to get Ottawa County to reconsider their scope of work, which is grinding up the asphalt and replacing it. That is exactly what they want to do. And so at any rate, um, when I worked with guy engineering, I said, you guys, uh, you know, they put this down by hand. They didn't use a paver because a paver didn't exist. They put this asphalt down by hand. They put the concrete down first. There's an actual concrete bed of pavement underneath the asphalt. And then there's about a two inch cap of asphalt laying on top of the concrete. So bringing in a grinding machine or is what we refer to in the, in the industry as a milling machine, 
would be highly destructive. Um, number, number one, you're getting rid of all the character, the characteristics of this highly patinaed road. And number two, you're jeopardizing the curbing that's there off to the left and right, and you're jeopardizing the concrete roadbed below. So um, my my scope that I presented to them was because this road was put in place by hand, you should do the repairs by hand. You should make a mixed design. And by the way, that that sample I had had the same aggregate in it in the concrete as it did the asphalt. That was another smoking gun telling you that that's the same asphalt uh, that's been there the whole time because the aggregates are the same in the concrete as they are in the asphalt. Uh, probably sourced from the pitcher tailing mines. But um, anyway, uh, they should patch the road by hand. And yeah, it's going to be it's going to be patchy looking. It's going to be splotchy looking. But I kind of made a reference to Disney's uh, Pixar's Cars, the movie Cars. When when Lightning McQueen and Tom Mater are having this really uh, intimate and personal conversation and, and Lightning said, has some remark about rusty old cars. And then Tomater pauses for a second and said, well, what's wrong with rusty old cars? And you'll see, as they're reminiscing throughout the movie Cars, you'll see Tomater at his prime when he was a brand new tow truck and he's blue and he's shiny and he has his hood but I guarantee you, you show that picture of that tow truck to 90% of the people that have only seen the movie once, they would have no idea who that tow truck is when, when he's just the blue shiny tow truck with his nice hood on. But you show them a picture of Tomater, the rusty old truck with, with uh, all sorts of dents and rust and uh, missing his hood, and they know exactly who that is. So what we're dealing with is, is completely erasing and changing the identity of this road. They say they're going to grind it up. They say they're going to grind it up and that they're going to uh, put in the road. They're going to reconstitute it. They're going to run it back through the asphalt plant, put down the same asphalt, and that's a bunch of bull hockey. They're never going to do that. And even if they did, even if they did, it would just look like a bicycle path in the middle of a cornfield. So... I got Bill Giddings on here. I'm going to bring him in. And Bill Giddings is a great guy. He has been such a wonderful volunteer at the Shamrock and a donor. And let's see if I can bring him in. Mr. Giddings. Bill, can you hear me? I can't hear Bill. I don't see any activity. And we might be having an issue because I got a couple of people in the back studio and I have no video from them. So, all right, Bill. If uh, Bill, if you get a chance, there's a button down there. It says chat. You might just uh, hit the button there and let me know if you can hear me or see me if you're in studio. Okay. Um, I'm going to take Bill off. But, yeah. So, do me a favor and sign that petition that you see up there in the corner of your screen. Click that QR code. Um, they are, they are dead set on doing this. So I, I told them what they should do is patch this road, patch the concrete. Now there's sections where they obliterated the road. Um, and, and here's an interesting fact and, and a very meaningful, very relevant fact. Let me get a picture pulled up for you real quick. Okay. I'm going to share that screen again. Not what I wanted. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to zoom in. Here's what you see, folks. That's a motor grader. Out in front here, that's the ribbon road. Now he's running along. This is a photo taken by David Wickline. I believe David said 2004. If David's out there, maybe he'll chime in but I think 2004 and uh, the commissioner at that time was a one Russell Earls. He was in charge of taking care of this stretch of road or maintaining it. 
And uh, I believe he's on record somewhere saying that he really could care less about that road. And all he wants to do is, is uh, get people to quit complaining about it and uh, to make it smooth again. And he doesn't care if he puts, you know, four inches of rock on it or, or if he just obliterates it and tears it all out. It's just a farm road to him. He did not care about Route 66 at all. But somehow, when this project all came about, he did an about face. Interesting how that works. Very, very interesting how that works. He did an about face and then all of a sudden became super interested in saving this road. Wonder why that is, folks. Why do you think that is? He before he could care less when it was his job, and, and then all of a sudden, he could care less. And by the way, he's no longer a highway commissioner anymore. He retired about two years ago. And, and in his place, his old road foreman, I think his name's Scott Hilton, took his place um, as the new commissioner. But as an even more interesting twist to this story, Russell Earls was hired on as a consultant for this project. So he goes from not caring to becoming interested and, and then retires and becomes a paid consultant for this project. It just stinks, folks. So what I told him to do is, and I'll go back to the, the other frame here. Give me a second. Let's find it. I wonder if I have a new frame. Uh, We'll just go back to the other frame. So what I told them to do was just patch in the asphalt, patch in the concrete curbs where they're broken. And yeah, where it's gone, where, where, where Russell's team destroyed the road, yeah, we're going to have to recreate it. We're going to have to try to find like aggregate, which they've been depleting the pitcher tailings uh, piles here rapidly. And I believe it's where most of this aggregate came from. But uh, we're going to have to find like aggregate. We're going to have to use a similar mix design that the asphalt used. And we're going to have to replicate this as much as possible where Russell's team destroyed the road. Yeah, we're going to have to do that. And yeah, it's going to look like a new road. And that's not what we really want to see. But if there's no road there, that's what we have to do. But in the case where we do have road there, why do we want to erase its identity? It doesn't make any sense. So going back more into my scope, I said, okay, you know, the semi trucks, the farm trucks, the big heavy equipment, they're driving down this road. And we all pretty much unanimously agreed. Now, there's a couple of people that didn't agree. The National Park Service and a couple of people didn't agree with this next statement, which is, I said, you should take this a step further and we should pave to the left and to the right of the road, and I'm not done yet, don't get freaked out, we should pave to the left and to the right of the existing ribbon road, and um, that'll give you a surface that vehicles can drive on. Maybe they'll stay off of the middle of the road then. Uh, but to not detract, because so, nobody wants to see nice new pavement on both sides of this, that'll be crazy looking, right? So, my bright idea was to uh, apply what they call a chip and seal treatment to these additional lanes that would be added. And it would give it a gravel looking surface. It would look like gravel, but underneath it'll be asphalt. So what you have is you have a nice solid surface. You have a good firm surface that requires very little maintenance. And in one of the last, uh, conference calls we had where ODOT, uh, Oklahoma Department of Transportation, had participated. They even volunteered to give Ottawa County what they call an oil distributor truck, which is the key component of applying that chip and seal surface. They were going to gift them one. And yet somehow they went back and flip-flopped around and said, no, we don't want to do chip and seal. Now we're just going to do straight asphalt. And uh, we're going to leave the road alone and not do anything. And then they came back and said, no, um, we're, we're going to grind out the road and totally replace it. So, folks, they're all over the place. And here's the common denominator. Almost all of your decision makers 
almost every one of your decision makers that is involved in this process, they don't know jack squat about Route 66. They don't know anything about its history. They don't know anything about this road. But somehow, through the power of bureaucracy, they are ordained decision makers in this process. That's why it's important for you to sign this petition. That's why it's important for you to share this petition. And I'll even post a few phone numbers that you can call because this means a lot. They are going to destroy this road if we don't get involved. If, if Us as a community, if we don't step up and put a stop to this, they're going to do it. And they're going to get paid to do it. They're going to get paid a lot. It would be better off to leave the road alone and not do anything to it and just let the feds have their money. Just don't do anything. That is a better alternative than what they are suggesting because what they are suggesting is destructive. And I believe that they are heavily confused. Uh, many times people get confused different terminologies such as restoration and preservation um, there are restorative efforts that take place in preservation, but a full on restoration in most cases is not preservation. Um, building a whole brand new painted desert trading post and reopening it would not be preservation. Digging up this road and replacing it with fresh, brand new asphalt is not preservation. People aren't going to come and want to see this road. It's just going to look like a, a stupid bicycle path running through the middle of a cornfield in Oklahoma. It's just ridiculous. I can't believe I'm sitting here having to fight for something so obvious. These people have no clue. That is that is the problem. These people have no clue. And they are looking for the path of least resistance. Let me tell you as a paving contractor, is it faster to grind out and pave a new road. Heck yeah. I ran the numbers on it actually. And the costs are about the same to do patching and, and where it needs it, not replacement, to do patching in, in places where it needs it, where the asphalt's missing. Uh, and that would have to be done by hand. It would take a long time uh, versus paving. The costs are about the same. The difference is, is that the patching would take about four times longer. It would take about probably four weeks to get that thing patched up. Whereas that section of road, boy, I tell you what, it's only three miles long. I bet they could mill that road and pave it uh, within four or five days. Yeah, it's faster. It's easier. Um that's the name of the game with these guys. They want to get in, they want to get out, and they want to get paid. They don't care about the historical characteristic of this road. They don't care about what you and I think. They don't care about the repercussions. They don't care, period. I've volunteered to both Guy Engineering and the county officials over at Ottawa County to come down and, and not just tell them from two states away well, of course, Missouri does border Oklahoma, but from like five hours away, I'm not just sitting here proclaiming all this from my throne of expertise. I will come down there. I will show them shoulder to shoulder, boots on the ground for as long as it takes how to do this work. I've made that offer at least three or four times and the offer still stands. So I'm not just up here uh, spouting off nonsense. I'm from the show me state. I'm not going to just tell you, I will come down there and show you, but they've never made good on my invitation to do that. Um, in fact, I think it's Scott Hilton. He's the uh, current Ottawa County, uh, transportation, I'm sorry, uh, County commissioner, highway commissioner. He won't even take a meeting with us folks. He does not want to hear from us. He has straight up refused and told his assistants that he does not have time to meet with us over this matter. So it's going to be very important for you to sign that, that petition. This probably won't, this probably won't be um, the last time I talk about this. In fact, I, I've been wanting to do videos on this for several weeks now. 
and just haven't had the time because of my work schedule and my family schedule. But you you may see some posts from me, folks, here in the middle of the week. If 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 I get a wild hair and I get something that uh, really aggravates me, some news, then um, yeah, I'm going to bring it to you, and I'm going to push you even harder. I'm going to challenge you guys to get out there and start making phone calls, start writing letters, start sending emails, sending text messages, getting through to these people that this is a serious matter that they should not just sweep under the rug. You can't just go in and uh, treat this like any other normal road and get in and get out. It's just not going to work like that. They are going to erase the history. This, this road has evolved to be what it is today. Yeah, just like Tomater. It, you know, being a rusty old truck, missing some parts. This is a beat up old road, missing some pieces and missing some sections. But we love it, right? Don't we love it? Can I get an amen out there? I hope so. Okay. Somebody wants to know what the petition's for. Well, scan the QR code. Scan the QR code and find out. If you're late and you're not sure what the petition's for, scan that QR code and find out for yourself because they're going to destroy a section of Route 66, Ottawa County. See that little ticker down there? Yep, that's what we're talking about right now. I'm going to let it run the rest of the show. That way we can get you guys to uh, to scan scan that thing. Uh, right now we're at like 950 signatures. We need 1,000. I know um, we do have some support. I'm not, this isn't all negative. So some of the support we have is from uh, Mayor Bless Parker, his first name is Bless. Mayor Bless Parker out of Miami, Oklahoma. He's very concerned about this. So much, in fact, that I'm not going to sit here and talk about his plans, but he's willing to make some outlandish moves to prevent this from happening, if within his power. And and that's that's a refreshing sign, but we can't bank on that. We we can't we can't rest on that. I mean, honestly, these people in Ottawa County that are in control or in power, they, they, they're the ones that messed the road up. Scott, Russell Earls, they're the ones that destroyed the road or tried to destroy it to begin with. And now we're putting those people in charge uh, of preserving it and doing restorative measures. I think it's absolutely absurd and very, very ironic. I it just, it, I can't believe we're doing this. Nobody, nobody has called attention to this except for me. Um, okay, I'm gonna go back down through our chat and see what I missed because I this wasn't supposed to be a ribbon road soapbox. Uh, we talked a little bit about the Gemini Giant, and uh, we did, I didn't, honestly, I was, I'm proud of you guys. I didn't see a bunch of condemning comments out there for Holly Barker. Uh, one of the things that she just put out on Twitter, I don't know if you guys have seen Holly's latest Twitter video, but she, um, she basically gave a big middle finger to all of us Route 66 people and said that we're all uh, Satan worshipers. And that whoever gets the Gemini giant, she's going to sue them, sue the organization, sue the individuals within the organization. And she didn't say exactly what, but what I suspected all along. And I had a conversation on Facebook with a very, very popular roadside uh, personality. I'm not going to say his name, but I did have a brief conversation about trademark rights. That's a big deal. Just because you bought the Gemini Giant doesn't give you trademark trademark rights. And so what I was saying all along with Gemini Giant was, why not just reproduce them? We've got this great fella running this new business called American Giants. And he's going all over the United States and he's finding giants off in the woods and he's restoring them. He, this guy is amazing. He's doing tons of great stuff. I, I need to get him on the show one day and, and talk about all the great stuff he's doing. He made uh, new fiberglass giants for Mary Beth Babcock. He's making one right now for her, a second one. And for roughly probably $35,000, maybe $40,000, we could have easily, this is my opinion, you can disagree, but we could have easily made a Gemini giant look alike. 
we could have called them uh, something else, you know, um, because what Holly said in her video uh, most lately was she's going to sue people. And she didn't say exactly what for, but it alluded to the fact that she was going to sue for trademark right infringements. And if whoever she sold the Gemini giant to, if they did not get trademark rights, she's not wrong. I hate to say it. She's not wrong. So you're going to end up changing the name of this giant fiberglass statue anyway to keep yourself safe from getting sued. You just gave her $275,000. I saw it as ransom. Um, the whole thing to me looked like a giant ransom note. The auction, everything. I mean, hold on just a second, folks. Just be right back. Now, I don't know what the motive was. I don't know what the motive was, but I looked at just a few of the items in the auction, uh, and with like a week to go, this thing right here, I've got one. This this is just as a, a tchotchke from... Uh, what you call it, Hobby Lobby. It's like, you know, the China, uh, the Harbor Freight of, of home decor, you know, Hobby Lobby. And it has a sticker, $49.99. I guarantee it didn't cost that much. It was probably like 20 bucks or something. And yeah, it lights up. But somebody paid like $300 for this thing at that auction. It's just silly. It was nuts. I don't know where these people came from. I don't know if they were just ignorant to the situation or if it had sentimental value, but why would you go and pay that kind of ransom? That's what it was. It was ransom. She held, and I don't have any problems with Holly. I'm not, people are call her all sorts of names and everything, but, but I'm adhering to the facts. These are the facts. Everything that she did is going to fuel her in the future. You guys didn't get that. You, nobody had any foresight going into this. People are willing to pay 150,000, 200,000, 250,000, ultimately $275,000 for a fiberglass statue that can be reproduced for 35 grand. And you get no trademark rights with it. So essentially, you paid almost 10 times the value of that statue. And yeah, there's one Gemini giant. Okay. But Folks, I could go out there and prove a point. I could throw on $35,000 cash and go make another Gemini giant. You wouldn't know the difference. So, I don't know. I, I was very disappointed in how the community and the public responded and paid her what she wanted. He, they, they paid her the ransom. They paid it. And now she's going to take all that money. I don't know what she made, but I'm imagining she made $300,000, $350,000 from the proceeds. She's potentially, she's able to take that money now and use it possibly against us for, for further furthering her agenda. I don't know what her agenda is. She's all over the place. I don't know what her agenda is. But... Um, she seems to have a lot of pent up animosity towards the Route 66 community. And I don't know why. I've reached out to her several times and, and tried to get her to talk and she, she wouldn't. But, um, and I, I hope and pray that she does better and, and maybe she'll just leave us alone. I don't know as far as the Route 66 community, but man, folks, we got to be smarter than this. Um, that, that, that 200 and, that extra $240,000 could have been used somewhere else to do a whole lot more good. And uh, I don't know what it's going to be, be used for now. Um, I've got John in the back office. Before I bring him in, I just want to come back in and see, uh, let's see here, some of the comments. And man, we, I tell you, thank you, everybody. We hit a record tonight. I, we, I don't know if we've done this before, but we hit about 110 viewers tonight. So thank you so much. I can't believe we hit those kinds of numbers and I did absolutely zero promotion. And I just pulled this out of my hat the last second. So thank you for that. Thank you for sharing. But but even more importantly tonight, make sure you sign that petition up there. Scan that QR code. Uh, I'm going to bring in John and Elizabeth. We haven't seen them in a while. Hey, Rich. Hi, Rich. Uh, how's it going, sir? Uh, pretty good. I hope you can hear me okay. Yeah, I, I had to turn you down. Your mic's cranked way up. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're good, though. I got you. I already got okay. it. Don't worry about it. I had to uh, install a driver, and it's uh, 
done some crazy things with the camera here. So let's see. Yeah. I, I've got Elizabeth I, here with me. She's up there in the corner. Yeah, I see her. Hey, Elizabeth. Hi. What'd you guys think about my uh, editorial tonight? All my commentary. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of heated here lately. Oh, you mean about and the pavement so. or about the uh, giant? Either one. All the above. Yeah, well, the pavement. It seems like the county is being mighty short-sighted and just doesn't understand, you know, the audience out there that is interested in, right. you know, uh, true original route sixty-six artifacts. One of the viewers said it in the chat earlier. Follow the money trail, and that's always been the case. The problem is, is, is sometimes that money trail is so heavily cloaked. You, you, you know. Listen, I come from a world of construction. Kickbacks happen. Oh, they yeah. happen and and there's no way to track them or or to find them you know just like the gasconade bridge which is something else we worked on heavily the last couple of weeks and we're still working on i i truly believe that somewhere there was a commissioner hiding cloaked in the darkness who was going to get paid handsomely from a construction company for demolishing that bridge it's my opinion i can't prove it but it's plausible um, and the same goes for Russell Earls and everybody else involved with this highway project down in Ottawa County on the Ribbon Road is that it just seems really odd that a guy who had a hard on for tearing up this road all of a sudden was put in charge of, of fixing it, retires, and then all of a sudden he's a paid consultant. It, it just hmm. just reeks to high heaven, man. <laughs> It does. So what did you think about all the happenings of Gemini Giant? Did you see what went down with that? Well, I wasn't following that too closely. Um, it sounds like it. Uh, I didn't hear where it's going, taking off to, where it's going to end up. Some museum, did you say? Yeah, well, the Historical Society there in Wilmington purchased it, uh, and they went and got it immediately. I guess as soon as they could go get it, they went and got it. Now, I don't know where he is now, but they say he's going to stay in Wilmington. So uh -huh. that is great. You know, that is awesome. I applaud them. I'm not condemning their efforts. I just wish they'd been a little <laughs> bit smarter about it. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of things are slipping away lately. Well, it's no different than like these. You know, okay, so me, I've got a lot of computer equipment and I've got 200 and 50,000 images of Route 66, mm -hmm. and those are very dear to me, not to mention my my family photos and stuff. When I grew up, my family didn't have cameras, not nothing elaborate, and so I don't have any home video of me or anything, so I, I take that personally. So in order to protect myself, I have multiple layers of, of protection, mm -hmm. you know, of backups, so if if I get hit with ransomware, which is a thing, people get hit with ransomware by these oh, yeah. by these uh, hackers, and they say, "Pay us five thousand dollars, or we're going to destroy your data." Mm -hmm. Go for it, dude! <laughs> destroy away. I don't give a <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh, sorry, I shouldn't have said that. But I don't. I don't care. You know, uh, I'm I'm just going to go hit a button on Crash Plan, and in about six to eight hours, it's going to restore everything from last night. You know, yeah. The same goes for this. It, I, and I even said that online. I didn't go and proclaim it because you know, let people do their own thing, go your own way. If you want to spend your money, silly, you know, go ahead. But um, I saw it purely as ransom the whole time. Yep, yeah. we've never been to the Munger Moss, have we? Mm -mm. Okay, what no. was the hotel we went to? It was... We went to the Wagon Wheel. Okay. Well, you weren't far. Over... You're about an hour away, hour and okay. a half. It was uh, over near, they've got all the murals over there. What town was that? Cuba. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Great so place. We, yeah. We spent a lot of time driving around taking photos of the uh, various murals there. So, hey, do you have any plans for the uh, solar eclipse? Everybody here is talking about it. You know, I can't believe it's the end of March already. Uh, my Same. brain, <laughs> my, my brain is probably still someplace in, in, 2019 really but but to think about that we're one fourth of the way through 2024 already is just a bit unnerving for me I, i'm 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 juggling so many projects both personally business on route 66 the association 
that my head is spinning. Um, I do want to shoot the Eclipse. I do need to order a filter um, for my lens. To, to, I mean, I've got. Those are getting hard to find now. Uh, I think. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> was it K and F con Keith and something concepts? Um, you'll see their ads on Facebook a lot. I've got yeah. a couple of their solar filters. They're they're fairly decent. But yeah, I got everything ordered in advance. Uh, I had a. I saw the uh, 2017 eclipse in totality. I went down to uh, west of uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky, out mm -hmm. in the boonies, and. Uh, uh, saw the total eclipse back in 2017, took my dad down there when he was still alive. And I had a set of solar binoculars. I ordered another set since Elizabeth will be with me. Oh, yeah, that's cool. And this has a little more magnification than the other uh, binoculars I've got. And I got a tripod mount for it as well. And you got a star tracker. And I've got a star tracker. Well, yeah, it's a. Uh, that's cool. Star oh, tracker. real quick. Uh, some news from, it looks like Dwight, who's the president of the Illinois Association, says the uh, the folks there to, in, in Atlanta, which I'm assuming is the American Giants people, they have the Gemini Giant right now, and they're cleaning him up, getting him ready for uh, restoration, doing some repairs, and then he will be put uh, in a park on South Island in Wellington. Thank you, Dwight, for that. I appreciate it, man. You're you're doing you're doing great as a new president, by the way. I love your energy, and I love what you're doing over there. Um, somebody else says for about Holly. This is I'm not sure this came from. She had an offer in excess of 600k for everything, uh, refused it, and then listed it for 1.4 million. Nobody was going to pay that. I agree. So maybe she got less than what she was uh, gonna get. I don't. I don't know. She seems to think that she's gonna keep. She's gonna sue people and and win a bunch of money. But so long as they don't use the Gemini Giant namesake, I think they'll be totally safe. Everybody knows what it is. Yeah, I don't, just don't put a label on it. You know. Um. Yeah. I, I don't know where I'm going for the eclipse. Um. We, I got a number of options. It's coming through this general area. So I'll do something. I'll get the family out. There's so much stuff happening in that week. It's like I almost need to take the whole week off of work to, to concentrate on all this stuff. We got the relighting. We've got um, the uh, Chain of Rocks Bridge reopening on the Missouri side. We've got the Eclipse all, all within a very short amount of time. So it'll be fun. Where are you guys headed to? We don't know um, yet. <laughs> well, we're in the area of totality, but only for about two minutes. If we drive about an hour, hour and a half at the most to the south, mm -hmm. we'll be in the, you know, a little over four minutes of totality. This is what I've got. It's a Benro. It's a three axis. It's kind of folded up right now, but that's the device I'm using to track the sun. Okay. Is that a gimbal of yeah, some sort? A, yeah. It's a star tracker equatorial yeah. mount. Um, the problem in, in photographing in the daytime with an equatorial mount, is those are designed to be aligned with stars. Right. And I wasn't keen on the idea of, um, you know, setting out, you know, $10,000 worth of camera and lens and letting it sit on a tripod <laughs> <laughs> for part of the night. So Yeah, I get it. Um, and I'm not sure what we'll be. We're just going to go south. If it's cloudy in Indiana, we may go as far as Texas. Um, you know, you've got a 25% chance of clear skies on April 8th in Indiana, statistically. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I just didn't see that happening. So I thought, well, we're going to, we may have to go further South, you know, maybe down into, uh, I don't know, Arkansas or whatever States are between here and, te and Texas. Right. And, uh, and go that route. But um, I wanted something where I could track the sun in the daytime because I've got three cameras and uh, I want to be able to get some, you know, photos of, you know, what it looks, what the horizon looks like looking in different directions during totality. Yeah. I know you're super uh, fanatical about, uh, you know, capitalizing on opportunities like yeah, this. By the time it comes around again, I'll probably be dead. So <laughs> it's, it's now or nothing. Yeah. And, and I did get a good picture when we had the lunar eclipse. I got mm -hmm. some really good shots of that, but I wasn't using any kind of a star track or anything. I just had to you know, I couldn't go too long on, on my exposures, but uh, we've got that. I've got the, uh, what you do is during totality, you can take the filter off your camera. 
Mm -hmm. In fact, that's what you do. You take the filter off during totality. But anything other than totality, you've got to have that solar filter on the camera. Otherwise, you'll really burn up the uh, uh, the image or the camera. Yeah, so, I've got a I've got a polarizing lens, which takes you down one or two stops too. So it might buy me a little bit of time. It won't take you down long enough. A, a few yeah. people will use a polarizer on a polarizer and adjust them both to where it goes almost black. Yeah. But you really want to just get, the filters are about 30, 40 bucks if you get one yeah. of the KNF concepts. Uh, and they're they're plenty good filters. Um, I know some photographers that are even using the little cardboard things you slip over the lens. You know, they have like the mylar or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in fact, I know one guy that's a very good professional photographer, and that's what he's planning to do. <laughs> so I thought, my God, you didn't get some filters for that? There's so, going to uh, be so many. I mean, think about it. There's going to be so many awesome images of this eclipse. Oh, yeah. That really, I don't even, I'll, I'll try to take a few pictures, but I'm not going to get carried away with it. One one thing I want to show so people understand, I want I'm sorry, I'm gonna go back to the road real quick, the ribbon road. I want to show people something real quick here. Let me uh, pull this up. So I I snagged this off of the internet, I don't know, probably 10 years ago. So for those of you that don't know me, I, I kind of got my start researching Route 66. Uh I mean, I went hardcore back in about 2010. And when I did that, I, I set out with a purpose built vehicle and I painted shields all up and down the road. And I, it's been a long time since I've painted shields. And since then, I've provided shields to cities and stuff, but uh, and, and try to encourage them to paint their own shields. But, but this is one of the original shields I painted back in 2010 on the Ribbon Road. And, and here's a fella. I think he's from New Zealand or from Australia. I think he was one of part of Dale Butel's group way back then. And uh, he stretched from one edge of the road to the other. What a great photo opportunity. And that's what people are coming to see. Um, so make sure you sign that petition, folks. Uh, make an impact. It literally will take two minutes of your life to sign that petition and share it. And you should share it everywhere. I don't know if you're a Twitter person, a Facebook person, Instagram. Um, share it everywhere you can. We need to blow these people away. I know we can do it. We're, we're are, you a gonna, great are you going to share that link to the group? Are you going to are you gonna share the link? Well, the QR code has it, and I'm going to share it inside the group too. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I am. Yeah. Excellent. So, um, link. Got a lot of things. I got uh, so. I'm going to wrap up here, but just so you guys know, before the night's over with, I'll, I'll post a, a link for the uh, Ribbon Road petition, the uh, Chain of Rocks Bridge opening, when that's going to happen, the Park Plaza neon sign relighting in St. Louis, which is an amazing, huge sign, Munger Moss Workday, and the Devil's Elbow sculpture that I put up in Devil's Elbow, Missouri, right next to the bridge in between that and the Elbow Inn. It's on Pam Thompson's uh, property. All right, folks, I'm going to wrap it up. I got to go to work tomorrow. So thanks, everyone, for joining me tonight. I will see you guys down the road. Go your own way. Thank you so much for being here tonight and setting a record like 110 people. It was fantastic. See you guys later.